You're listening to Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia. Hello and welcome to episode... 62 of Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia. This is Brandon. This is Brad. This is Nick. So we got an action-packed episode for you this week. <laughs> <laughs> episode 62. We sobered it up a little bit. We're no longer drunk. We had like two weeks to sober up. <laughs> uh, so what we got going on for you today is we've got a game of the week. If anyone wants to discuss the game they've been playing, I know I do. So that's coming back. We've got a top five for you, top five foods and video games. We've got a consensus of that afterwards. And we may even see another appearance by Macho Man. Oh, man. <laughs> Foreshadowing. <laughs> so now it's quote time. Brandon, here's your redemption. Last week you didn't give a quote because you were too inebriated. Uh-huh. Do you remember what your quote was? Yes, I have it now. Is it the same one, or did you just go for something different? No, it's the same one. Okay. It was relevant to the town we were in. Los Angeles? Yes. Okay. Sometimes I feel like my only friend is the city I live in, the city of angels. As lonely as I am, together we cry. That's a Tom Petty song. I think that's Under the Bridge. Oh, yeah, it is. That's what it is. From the Red Hot Chili Peppers. I thought it was free falling for some reason. Yeah. I hate Tom Petty. <laughs> <laughs> he's not bad. Eh, he's pretty bad. Sounds like John Mellencamp. <laughs> Sounds like he's maybe it's whining. maybe it's John Cougar Mellencamp I like and not Tom Petty. Maybe the the whole Jack and Diane. Yeah, who's sucking on a chili dog? I think that's Tom <laughs> Mellencamp. <laughs> 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 chili dog. <laughs> Uncle Ron used to say that. Yeah, he sucking did. on a chili dog. <laughs> Alright, so game of the week uh, Have you played any more of Last of Us? I didn't get a chance to play Last of Us this week However, because I have that mouse pad from, That I won from episode 60 The Mega Man 3 mouse pad You can see on uh, Instagram Check out our Instagram page, by the way uh, Brad got this cool Mega Man 3 mouse pad And I, it looks at me every day Just dying <laughs> to be played so I got home one day from work and I was like all right this is the day I'm gonna play and the next day I emailed Brad and Brandon like that shit's fucking hard <laughs> <laughs> the levels are pretty are, are not too difficult but the bosses in that game are much more difficult than they are in Mega Man 2 uh, I have to admit I I went to the Mega Man wiki page and I was trying to find out which you know uh, bosses were weak against which uh, weapons and there was a loop of three. It was Gemini Man, Needle Man, and Snake Man, whose weapons were all weak against each other. So usually, like, you can start with one and just go throughout the rest of the yeah. game from there. But those three bosses, you have to beat one of them in order to get uh, their weapon to, to make the next two bosses easy. I just... I, I gave it a couple tries, and then I was like, fuck this shit. <laughs> <laughs> and then I, I called it. But it's, it's a great game. I will beat Needle Man with the Buster Cannon. Without any sort of special uh, weapons, eventually. Needleman's a little bitch. She is a bitch. But that's the one that I got down the most. I, I think I got Snake Man down pretty, pretty, uh, pretty low as well. Uh-huh. But uh, Gemini Man, I, I couldn't figure no. that guy out. He's too fast. He's way too fast, and he mir- he mirrors your uh, movement. But he had there's two of them, and when one of them mirrors your movement, it's like you got to have some sort of advantage on him in order to. To take him down, I, I couldn't do it with the Buster Can. I could barely touch him. That snake shot really hurts him. Really, once you get that, yeah, I'll give that a shot. First, I got to beat Snake Man. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. Uh, so I've been playing Shining Force Two. Really cool game. Basically, it's a grid-based strategy turn-based game where you have different classes. You have centaurs. You have heroes. You have phoenixes. You have priests. You have wizards. You have all these different classes. Which system is this for? Sega Genesis. And you're playing it on Sega, the Sega Genesis. Okay, so you're not playing the Wii version? No. Oh. Didn't you buy it, though? No. Oh. I have it all for Sega. So the cool thing about it, what I like to do every time, is change everybody's names. 
uh, through the whole story, all the main characters, you get to change their names, which you usually can't do unless you have a code. So, when you meet them, you get to change their name? No, you have to do it at the beginning of the game. It, you a enter code. a code and then you... Uh, okay, so you did the code? Yeah. Okay, got it. So the hero, of course, I named Torment. Uh, the Phoenix, which is the second strongest character, I named uh, Crisis. Then we have the, the Centaurs, I named one of them Cain. And I named the female centaur Melissa. <laughs> oh. Nice. And then I have Slade the Rat, who's a ninja. I named that Sam. <laughs> uh, the wizard, I named Logan because I was going through the characters and Logan said, Ooh, I want to be him. He looks like me. So he kind of has blondish hair. Was it K Kazen? Kazen, yeah. yeah. And then Jordan, I named after the little dwarf guy, the sturdy looking guy, Jaha. And then there's a stupid looking bird. Uh, who we never wanted to get. He was a secret character. His name is Squawk. And he just looks so retarded. And when his picture came up and I had to name him, I was like, who can I name this guy? Sam said, name it Alexis because he looks retarded. <laughs> <laughs> who said that, Sam? Sam. So that's what I did. And then one more I wanted to go over. There's this monster you get named, his name's Kiwi. He's a tortoise. And I named him Gojira after the Japanese version of Godzilla, which would have made more sense if I named him Gamera. I promoted all my characters. Once you get to level 20, you get to promote them all. And I promoted most of them, and I beat the Kraken, I beat Talos, and that's where I am so far. I found the Achilles sword, which is the only thing that hurts Talos. So you just beat Talos? Yes. Uh, Far Cry? Yeah. Have you been playing that a lot? Uh, yeah, I have. I've mainly been, basically you're trapped on an island and you have to find your friends being held captive by this guy named Vass. And this island is huge. There's 36 different outposts you could capture or take over from the enemy and 18 different uh, radio towers that when you collect them, they show you a piece of the map. So I've unlocked four radio towers, and I've just been collecting all the treasure on the map. Uh, I've only done maybe four real missions. Like, I've played for about a week, week and a half, and Matt said, oh, so where are you at now in Far Cry? I said, uh, I have to meet with the jungle ladies. Like, that's in the beginning of the game. You've been playing for, like, two weeks. I said, yeah, I've just been collecting loot. He's like, oh, okay. So I'm still, you get to hunt animals, which is cool. Like, there's panthers and or leopards and tigers and bears oh my uh yeah uh there's also ostriches are there, are there, that attack you are there snakes there's i fought two snakes oh man <laughs> uh, but you don't skin them you you can't get their hide because when you when you skin the animals you can make stuff out of them it's pretty fun open world i like it that's like metal gear solid 3 that game's hella fun because you get to kill basically any animal and eat it and snakes give you a lot of health. That's cool. Yeah. In the final area where you're fighting the last boss, you could kind of retreat and sneak around in the grass, and you could find old snake and liquid snake and eat them solid snake. Oh, wow. Like named after uh, snake, so that's, that's pretty cool. Treasure hunting? Yeah. How many hours do you have for treasure hunting? Four. I've got about 30. <laughs> <laughs> First, I've got a bribe. What's the bribe? And if you don't steal one of my treasures, because you get to steal one. Have you ever had chocolate-covered honeycomb? No. That's what this is. How many items do you have? Like 30. 30? I've... <laughs> Are they cards? <laughs> 19 of them are cards. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have 30. I've got... Okay, so... How many real treasure items Like do you have? seven. Okay. Or I think seven. Okay, go ahead and reveal some of them. I'll reveal... Oh, I've got eight. I'll reveal the first... I guess I'll go in order. These first three I got at uh, Yard Cell last weekend. It was before I went to Dimple and found those other ones. Nintendo 64 game. Pokemon Puzzle League. 
you could see the like the beginnings of a name. Yeah. And the guy who sold him, who had him, didn't look like he had any children. Oh, that's jacked up. Maybe he's an adult name, then. Maybe. Okay. Another one. Pokemon Stadium. Pretty tight. I'm actually really surprised he had this one. Zelda Minish Cap. That's cool. So how much are these worth? Uh, 11, 8, 25. Holy cow. Okay. Good. More? Yep. These three, I got at Dimple. Three dollars <laughs> each. Mario and Luigi. Superstar Saga. Pokemon Sapphire. <laughs> Zelda Four Swords for all for Game Boy Advance. That's cool. A lot of work. Cool. 10, 16, and 14. Nice. Wonder about my last one. Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance 2 for PlayStation 2. How much is that worth? 40. Really? Yep. That's cool. Yep. Alright, so how much does yours add up to? 123. Wow. Here's my first two items. Oh, where'd you get these bad boys? Temple. Ducktales for Game Boy and Alien vs Predator for Game Boy. Seven dollars each. Hi. Check this bad boy out. Oh, Fire Red. Twenty-five. That's tight. And my final one. Oh, sexy time! <laughs> Look at that. So let's see which one of these bad boys I'm going to steal. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, like that? Sure. I get how many rolls? One. Yes! Uh, I got the $40 one. Is that the random number generator? No, it's dice roller. Oh. Uh, so... Let's go ahead and add this up again real quick. Brad got to steal Boulder's Gate Darkest Alliance 2. I think it still might be pretty close. 40 minus 123 is 83. So 40, 50, 65, plus 14, 79, plus 17. So 65, 79, and 17, you said? I think you beat me. Oh, still. wow. Thank you, dice rolling game. Dice rolling game. Shout out to the dice roller D20. <laughs> Alright, hopefully you don't get bamboo shoots. <laughs> okay, so here's your punishment. First roll, six. Still, oh, you know I'm not picking that shit. Ten. Taxi! I'll do a taxi. Alright, so Brad's prize. Thanks. Five to Treasure Bank. Death Punch times five. <laughs> I'm going to have to add five dollars to my Treasure Bank. Sounds good. So you didn't want this? I couldn't because I didn't take the bait. I'll take it for giving you a ride here. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> What is it? Chocolate covered honeycomb? Uh huh. Honeycomb like the cereal or? No, like honeycomb. bees. Oh, fuck yeah. You're not allergic to bees, are you? No. Okay, good. So, like us on Facebook. Uh, we're going to actually do a raffle to win prizes. In episode 64, we'll be giving away a signed Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game for the Nintendo Entertainment System. Now, this isn't just any old NES cartridge. This is the first cartridge that Brandon and I put our money together and actually bought when we were little. So you're getting a sentimental treasure from us. It's like Scrooge McDuck's number one dime. Who's the contenders right now? Basically anyone who likes us on Facebook, so there's already like 72. Plus Zachary McDaniel nominated a girl, got her his girlfriend to like us, so that's 10 raffle tickets. And I believe Jason Johnston got his brother to like us, mm. so he's got five more. Cool. 
So spread the word. If you guys get someone to like us on Facebook, on our Facebook page, at Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia, you'll get five extra raffle tickets. If it's a female, you'll get ten extra raffle <laughs> tickets. Yeah, so make sure to send us a message and let us know that um, that person liked us because... I'm keeping track. I've got a list on my computer. So we also have an Instagram, which is at Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia, all one word. And Twitter for with NES Hunter. Yeah, and on YouTube, we actually got quite a few episodes downloaded. We're up to episode 38, Shorukins. Let me go ahead and recommend some episodes for you. 37, episode 37, is when we talked about Kevin Smith characters and Kevin Smith quotes. We also did the Pepsi Challenge. 32, one of my favorite episodes by far, short and sweet. This is when we did our top five drinks. <laughs> Brandon actually ended up giving me a nut tap on one because I listed too many Coke items. And I paired my drink with food that you guys could try out, some combinations. Um, episode 30, Twisted Shame, that's another good one. That's the game show where I made Brandon and Matthew, my brother, do a hun bunch of twisted, horrible things. Like, Brandon had to kiss Nick's butt for a whole minute. <laughs> it only ended up being, like, five seconds. In episode 38, Shorukin, that's when we had Karen on as a guest, my wife. That's when the ass punch was introduced. <laughs> Too bad there's not video footage of that. That was a great ass punch. <laughs> there's audio footage, though. Coming up, we're going to have episode 39, Lulu vs. Tifa, where we discuss our favorite Final Fantasy characters. So go ahead and keep an eye out for that in episode 41, The Shining vs. The Shining. Top five movies based in hotels. Great episode. Yeah, we were tired on that episode too, but it, it's a pretty good episode. Go ahead and check that out. I'll have that on there later this week. Uh, so go ahead and keep giving us our likes. We love all the feedback. Uh, thank you so much for all your responsiveness on the webpage. We really appreciate it. So let's get into this top five. Top five food items found in video games. This was kind of hard when I first thought about it, but then it got a little bit easier. Nick told me, I have my list all written out. I'm going to go back and do research. I was like, dude, I tried to do research and it was useless. Yeah, there wasn't much to be had in the way of research, that's for sure. Had to go off the memory banks on this one. Yep. So we're going to roll the dice, see who goes first. Nick gets 10, I get 10, and Brandon gets 5. Roll off. Nick gets 1, and I get 4. So I'll start, then Brandon, and then Nick. The way I did my list was I did it based off of usefulness. So just because you went and ate a stupid tomato on Curve and it gave you life, that wasn't good enough for me. It might have been good for other people. <laughs> I don't really have a rationale for my list. <laughs> I just went from what I thought was the coolest to least, or at least cool to coolest. Yeah. So my first item, number five, is going to be from Final Fight. It's going to be in the SNES version called Barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> Mostly found in garbage cans or under mailboxes. This forgotten food fully restores your health. That was my number five, Barbecue. Number five on my list was a Maxim tomato. <laughs> They're glowing red tomatoes with large black M's in the center. They are found in almost all Kirby games as well as Super Smash Brothers and restore all of your health when eaten or inhaled. They are said to be Kirby's favorite fruit, food. And the reason this may be list is because of Super Smash Brothers. When you're at 100% and you're getting close to being knocked off, Eat that thing, you go all the way back down to zero. I thought there was a cap on it. I only thought it gave you 100, and the heart gave you 250. Yeah, so if you had 100, you would go down to zero. This one's a little bit obscure. Oh, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Have either of you played a boy in his blob? Yeah! <laughs> in this game, you're controlling a boy on an alien planet who, with the assistance of his alien blob friend is assigned the task of saving the planet of Blobalonia from an evil emperor. I think, like, the evil emperor is trying to rid the planet of taste or something like that. I, I, don't, I don't know. I'm not really sure. I never really got far enough in the game to be sure. 
Unfortunately, the boy has no special talents. In fact, he can't even <laughs> jump or swim. But he's armed with a shitload of flavored jelly beans. Blobbert, that's the name of the alien blob friend, will shapeshift into a wide variety of tools when he is fed different flavored jelly beans. For instance, when Blobbert eats a cola flavored jelly bean, he'll turn into a bubble which can be used to breathe underwater. And if you feed him a licorice flavored jelly bean, he'll turn into a ladder. So my number five is the jelly beans from the boy and his blob. I think that kid did have a special <clears throat> power. He could go into outer space without dying. <laughs> you know that? If you feed him, I think, lime or something, he turns into a rocket. Yeah. That was that game was pretty tight. That made my honorable mention list. Uh, the tangerine turned him into a trampoline. Yeah. And then there's one that actually turns him into a machine gun. They call it a vitamin shooter, but you know it's really a machine gun. <laughs> I wonder what would happen if you fed him a semen flavored oh, jelly man. bean. <laughs> <laughs> he turned into a bunch of tadpoles. <laughs> uh, yeah, I remember as soon as you go down that subway into the little manhole and go into the cave to find treasure to buy special flavored jelly beans, there was no way of returning until you made it all the way through the cave and back up to the other side. So the first whole part of the game, you had to not die or you start all over. Or not say game over, I mean. And then you get to blob Blobalonia. <laughs> Those marshmallows are killer. And the cherry bombs that drop from the trees. <laughs> I thought it was funny whenever he died, that sad music played and he just slide and lie on the ground. <laughs> and how about when you feed the, the blob the jelly bean and his mouth's open and then you kind of move before you throw it and it misses and he does a little frown. Oh, yeah. yeah. A solemn face. <laughs> solemn face. <laughs> <laughs> My number four is going to have to be pizza from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Turtles in Time. Not only does this flying saucer of food delight heal you, the turtle also says, pizza time. <laughs> number four on my <laughs> list is uh, another health restorative item from Battletoads, and that's the fly. <laughs> I chose this one because it gave a unique animation to the frog sticking its tongue out and you swallowing the fly. And you needed health in that game to survive. It was extremely hard, but whenever a fly came off, you had to mash the attack button to eat some up to get your health back. <laughs> Remember when we played two-player with Matt? And we'd pick him up and throw him out of the way so we'd eat the fly. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> I've got two words for you. Grumble, grumble! <laughs> Any true gamer knows what that's from. As a child playing Zelda for the first time, I was never sure why I would ever want to pay 100 rupees for a piece of meat on the bone. It turned out that I would someday run into a hungry Gariah. This Gariah is blocking your path in the seventh dungeon of Zelda, and he cannot be defeated. You can swipe your sword at him, or you can throw your boomerang at him. You can light him on fire with your candle. Gariah doesn't give a fuck. He's fucking hungry. <laughs> Throw him a piece of meat and he disappears. And that's why my number four is a big-ass piece of meat on Legend of Zelda. Number three on my list is going to be Yeto Soup from Legend of Zelda Ooh. Twilight Princess. You help the Yetis make this soup in one of the dungeons by collecting various ingredients. Why it's so high on my list are based off of the ingredients. It only restores eight hearts, but it made it so high because it's made from pumpkin, sweet potatoes, smoked haddock, and the good news is you can make it in real life. There's a recipe where you could make it and they've got like big old pieces of shrimp sticking out of it. Pumpkin and sweet potato. Oh man, I'm gonna have to make that sometime this winter. <laughs> so number three is the yellow soup. That made my honorable mentions because of one key ingredient. Goat cheese. Nice. <laughs> I love goat cheese. So my number three. What do you get when you combine Blamco macaroni and cheese, crunchy mute fruit, a death claw egg, and lake lurk meat. The wasteland omelet from Fallout 3 New Vegas. <laughs> In order to come back to create it, you have to have a survival skill of greater than 65, and you could make this treat by campfire or by a hot plate you find around the wasteland. It reduces your hunger greatly if you're playing hardcore mode, and can heal you up to 12 HP hit points for the casual gamer. 
per second. <laughs> so 12 HP per second for 60 seconds. That's so, a lot of hit points. It is, especially when you're going up against face to face with a death claw. For my number three, I've got one word for you. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Brad mentioned it earlier. It's the barbecue from Final Fight. I have to admit, I I've only played Final Fight on the SNES, so my experience with Guy is limited to battles on uh, Street Fighter Alpha 3. But when it comes to a decision between Cody and Hagar, you know Hagar takes the cake. Or in this case, <laughs> a big-ass turkey leg. Or the barbecue, as Brad said. After kicking a very large quantity of ass while wandering the slums of Metro City, Hagar is bound to take some damage. What better way to heal your wounds than to crush some garbage cans? And consume its contents. Yes. <laughs> there might be a hamburger, some fruit, maybe even the occasional pizza. But you rolled a Yahtzee when the humongous turkey leg appeared. So that's why my number three is the turkey leg or barbecue from uh, Final Fight. There were also huge bottles of soda that I think they refilled your your health all the way too. No. There no. Were, uh, there was. I think there was. There. You're right. There was soda, but I think there was also whiskey or like a bottle of wine too. <laughs> <laughs> there was a few different items that you could find in there that would replenish your HP. Uh, don't you fight you, when you fight Sodom or Katana? They have soda sitting out, right? I don't I don't remember that. Really? You could grab his Katana. Yeah, that's how could tie. <laughs> Number two on my list is going to be the golden egg from Resident Evil. And mainly Resident Evil 4, 5, and 6. Uh, basically, this food item takes up only one slot in your item case, so a traditional herb takes up eight slots, where the egg only takes up one little square. It heals you fully, and you can follow chickens around until it drops one. <laughs> but it can take a while since they mostly drop brown eggs or white eggs or even rotten eggs. But you can even kill the chickens and sometimes they'll drop them but it's really rare and I think they only lay probably an egg every 10 minutes so it takes forever to find one uh, number two on my list is elixir soup from the wind waker elixir soup is an item from Legend of Zelda the wind waker a soup made by Link's grandmother it will fully heal Link's health and magic in addition it will double his attack strength making Link's sword glow until he takes damage when he first obtains it, you get two helpful servings in the bottle, but any instance after that, you only get one helping. But it's free, and you can get it whenever you want, but you can only carry one bottle worth at a time. It's cool. You know what tastes like a good? Just chicken. Honey crisp? Not honey crisp, but what's covering it? Chocolate. chocolate. Oh, fuck yeah, chocolate <laughs> tastes like a good. When you got a sweet tooth, you know you want some fucking chocolate. Most people just view chocolate as a dessert, nothing more than throwaway calories. But Square Enix recognizes the benefits of chocolate. <laughs> and that's why my number two is the chocolate from The Secret of Mana. Oh, man. What better way has there ever been to boost your hit points? I mean, I know you restore your health from getting blowjobs in Grand Theft Auto, but that aside, <laughs> eating chocolate to increase your health is pretty sweet. So that's my number two is chocolate from Secret of Mana. Here we go, the cream of the crop. One of the most elegant food items in real life. Translate to fat liver. <laughs> Foie gras. <laughs> Whose liver are you eating? I'll tell you who, duck liver. The ducks are force-fed fattening food, so their liver gets fatty. And when they kill them, they extract the fatty liver and cook it for your delight. You would think that they die on their own with all the fat that they get fed. <laughs> I didn't know this. I did some research on it, and that's what makes them fatty is hmm. they force feed the ducks fatty food. That's how I could try it. <laughs> I, I actually went out this weekend to try to find some for this top five list. Uh -huh. I was going to go to this heck of expensive restaurant called The Kitchen. Oh, an art in. Oh, man. It's $150 a person. Yeah. Oh, shit. Just for this top five, I was going to do it. <laughs> but I found out that California banned foie gras in January. <laughs> what? I was so fucking pissed off. <laughs> and there's a little French restaurant uh, in Rockland that used to sell it for your dish. And they stopped selling it in July, too. So I was so pissed off. So I'm going to have to go somewhere and eat some foie gras. So where do you find the foie gras in what game? 
Symphony of the Night. Castlevania Symphony of the Night. You find it only once, and it completely restores your health. But it made the, the top spot because of its elegance. Number one on my list is uh, Turkey Leg from Castlevania. Enough said. <laughs> if you've ever seen me before, it'd be fair of you to assume that I'm not one to appreciate the virtues of vegetables. <laughs> <laughs> but in this game, vegetables are used for their true intended purpose. <laughs> As weapons! <laughs> yes, I'm talking about Super Mario Brothers 2. <laughs> Whether you use Mario, fucking moron. Princess, what are you, a fucking broad or something? <laughs> Toad, at least he can pull roots out of the ground hecka fast. Or Luigi, oh hell yeah! You can uproot vegetables like turnips, onions, beets, and radishes and chuck them at your foes for an insta-kill. And the last boss, King Wart can only be defeated by force, f forcing vegetables down his throat. An honest depiction of the effects of vegetables. So vegetables from Super Mario Bros. 2 are my number one. It's tight. <laughs> Honorable mentions? Uh, I don't have any. It was hard enough to come up with those five. And like you said, I tried to do research, and it was like, uh, video game food made in real life. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Yeah, that's where I found the Yeto suit. Oh, man. I have a few. I have mushrooms from yeah. Mario. That was one I had as well. Uh, Mario's still not making it on my list. <laughs> not until it comes out with the wizard part two. <laughs> uh, I love mushrooms too. They're hella good. Yeah, they are. Pineapples and trog, which turned you into a big oh, giant Oh, I dinosaur. forgot about that. That game's tight. Bananas and Donkey Kong. Yep. Even though I hate the game, collecting bananas are somehow satisfying. Melon and Breath of Fire series. Come on, melons. <laughs> <laughs> Too big, obvious reason. <laughs> That's right. And uh, the cake in DuckTales. Nice. The only, uh, I've had a few of those as well. My only addition would be uh, cherries and Pac-Man. Or basically anything in Pac-Man. He, he devours fruit. But uh, uh, Super Mario World, Yoshi also eats a lot of fruit. Like berries and things like that. Uh, do we have like a pen or a pencil to do a consensus? Alright, so... I don't care about Maximum, maximum Tomato. I don't care about Fly. I would like to see the turkey leg from Castlevania on there, though. In Castlevania 3, it's called the leg of werewolf. I want to see that on number 3. <laughs> <laughs> so you have Castlevania for Bois, and you also have the turkey leg, or... The, what is it, leg of werewolf? <laughs> yeah. Um, I'd like to see the golden egg on the list. It's very cool that it only takes up one slot and fools you, heals you fully. What is that from again? Resident Evil. Oh. I mean, barbecue. Barbecue has to be on there. Yeah, I agree. I'm gonna just put that number one right now. <laughs> Come on. There's not really... I'll put it as number one if the Lego Werewolf gets number two. That's fine with me. Yes. <laughs> Yep. All right, I can agree to that. I'd like to see foie gras next. What? <laughs> you said it only shows up one time? It's it's a rarity. <laughs> what if you try it eventually and you don't like it? That's a possibility. <laughs> like you take a bite and an explosion of fatty oil just drips into your cheek. How would you feel? How it feels pretty silly putting that on my number three. I think we've got to give some credit to items that don't just recover hit points, though. That's true. Like the bait from Zelda. <laughs> yeah, plus it's Zelda. It gets uh, entitlement. I can see that at number three. What about those jelly beans? <laughs> those have a wide array. They, they do. You could get turned into a blowtorch. <laughs> <laughs> to burn the spider man up. And the, and the car jack. I think if you yes. get an apple. <laughs> apple jacks. <laughs> That's like a tie. <laughs> I say jelly beans than the foie gras. Are you okay with I'm that? I'm perfectly fine with that. <laughs> do you care what order it's in? Four or five? Jelly beans is four because it has more available yes. uses. Heck yeah. I forgot about the blowtorch. 
<laughs> okay, so we got Frogwa Frogwa <laughs> from the uh, Symphony of the Night, Jelly Beans from A Boy and His Blob, the Bait or Turkey Leg from the original Legend of Zelda, the Leg of Werewolf from Castlevania, and Barbecue from Final Fight. It's our uh, consensus top five. Barbecue's I like it. Heck of tasty. <laughs> Did you see the thing that I posted on our Facebook page? The Onion yeah. did an article. <laughs> that was pretty funny. I was hoping that it was because a lot of times they'll they'll write like complete articles of bullshit. That was only a headline. Yeah. I was wanting to read an article. With. Oh well. Check out our Facebook page to see what we're talking about. By the way. Yeah, be in the end. You don't want to be on the outskirts. Right, right. And while you're at it, like it because you'll get a enter to win some prizes. So I sent <laughs> Brad a picture of a Coca Cola canister it was like a 12 pack of soda and they had stuff written on there like friend and then the gamer that's just stupid <laughs> brad said this hate needs to stop <laughs> <laughs> so uh, i decided to ease up on two of the things that i two of the three things i hate on this podcast Either Coke, Quentin Tarantino, or Stanley <laughs> Kubrick. So it got me to thinking. I an obvious one I could stop hating on right now is Stanley Kubrick, only because of his Clockwork Orange movie. That's I will right. forgive him for fucking up The Shining. So I'll go ahead and let that one go. Now, Quentin Tarantino. Oh man, this guy's such a pervert freak. <laughs> <laughs> Always has to get the signature shot of the bare feet, and then <laughs> he, he plays a rapist in Planet Terror. And in <laughs> <Dust of God. laughs> but uh, That's a pedophile, not a rapist. He's like, sure, I'll eat your pussy, your 15-year-old girl. What a creep. I mean, come on. And then we've got Coke, <laughs> just the scum of the scum. <laughs> <laughs> Many do not know this, but one of the secret ingredients of Coke is piss. <laughs> and for that alone, I cannot forgive the inferior drink. So I'll ease up on Quentin because of From Dust Till Dawn. He was in that movie, and the TV miniseries did push me to forgive him, but not Coke. <laughs> Fresca, Coke, Monster. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Well said. <laughs> we all know that SummerSlam is come and gone. Do you guys want to talk about that at all? I blew my load like three times. <laughs> <laughs> While we were there? Yeah. <laughs> that was multiple, like just that one match? No. Oh, okay. When Brock Lesnar first F5 John Cena, uh -huh. and then after he pinned him after like 16 suplexes and another F5. Uh -huh. Yeah, I blew my load two times during that match. And then the first one was the Bree and Stephanie match. <laughs> what what point in time? <laughs> At what point? Um, in, probably when he shouted, "I'm I'm coming." <laughs> 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 I forgot about that. <laughs> Is that when Nikki turned, or was that? Yeah, when, when Nikki turned on Bree, I was definitely at full staff. <laughs> what, what do they call it? Is that the, is that the correct term? Six to midnight. Six to midnight. <laughs> <laughs> and then once uh, Stephanie pedigreed Bree, oh, and then once she got on top of her, and after the three count, oh, she yeah. like whispered something in her ear. Oh, did she? Yeah, you can oh, see, I that. see that. Like if you watch, the, I saw it live, but if you watch it on the network, you can see her like, like get up next to her face and like whisper something. It's fucking sexy as hell. Can, if a lip reader were to watch it, would they be able to make it out? Maybe I don't. That'd know. be cool to see what she whispered. <laughs> like I saw treasure hunting for nostalgia sign. Look over there. <laughs> oh, that was holy. That, that, that's probably what she said, actually. <laughs> And also, there there was one where I almost blew my load. Paige's page, the diva, WD, WWE diva, is doing this thing now where like she'll like crawl up from the yeah. from the foot of her foe and just like kind of do this sexy stripper <laughs> move on on her fallen enemy. 
Oh. Paige and AJ. That I, I, I could see that match over and over, and it looks like it's going to keep happening, too. So that was really good. That oh, was, Dallas. Yes. Gave us a thumbs up. Yeah, he did. That was hella tight. <laughs> he saw us all in our Bo Lee shirt with our sign and just gave us the most inspiring thumbs up I ever had. <laughs> That must have been hard walking home with all that seminal fluid in your underwear. <laughs> <laughs> walking back to the hotel. Oh, man. No, but it was a really, really good time. Too bad they're not going to do it next year at the Staples Center. It was really fun. Yeah. Picanha for days. <laughs> um, so we're going to have WrestleMania in San Francisco in March. I think that's why they're moving SummerSlam elsewhere. Yeah. Because we're having WrestleMania rather than SummerSlam. So, yeah, hopefully we can get to go to uh, WrestleMania. Even though, I, from what I hear, seeing a wrestling event in a stadium is not quite the same as seeing it in, a, in an arena. But it is a, definitely a once-in-a-lifetime mm-hmm. thing that we should do. Yeah. But yeah, that Seth Rollins-Dean uh, Ambrose match was sick. Yeah, it was. It was a lumberjack match. There were uh, wrestlers all on the outside of the ring, and one of them being Bo Dallas. <laughs> That's where he saw us and gave us the thumbs up. It sucks when they were in the audience and really couldn't see what was going on because they were, we were being blocked, but still, when you watch it live it's all, or on the TV, it's good, too. You can see what you missed. And you could see uh, when they're scanning all the lumberjacks, Bo is about to put his hand yeah. back on and give us a thumbs up. Yep, I did see that. <clears throat> Jerk of the week. Do you have one? No, I don't. I have one. Okay. I have one as well. You're doing a promo, right? Yeah. All right, I'll start. Wait, what was my Jerk of the Week? (laughs) (laughs) I think I know what it is. It's making its second appearance on my Jerk of the Week list. Oh, man. StubHub. Oh, no. Motherfuckers. It's actually not StubHub's fault. It's kind of Jimmy Eat World, so Jimmy Eat World and StubHub (laughs) are kind of my uh, Jerks of the Week. So, Brad, Brandon, and I saw that one of the bands that we're into, they're called the Mini Bosses. They're a video game cover band. They uh, just released, I think it was either last week or the week prior, to that they're uh, supporting Jimmy Eat World on a tour. And we're like, oh, fuck, they're coming to Sacramento on uh, October 3rd or something like that. We're definitely going to that. And we're, we're, like, posting on their Facebook page saying, yeah, we'll see you on October 3rd. We're all really excited. And, like, the next day... I look at the uh, the venue's uh, box office or ticketing supplier, and they sold out. I was like, what the fuck's up with this? Who who wants to see Jimmy Eat World this bad? And it turns out that Jimmy Eat World actually announced, or excuse me, the venue started selling tickets for this event back in like June or something like June that. June 20th. And we, didn't, <laughs> we didn't become privy to it until like August 20th or something like that. So two months later. So, yeah, it's kind of expected that two, with two months' time. It could possibly sell out. So, fuck you, Jimmy 8 World, for not announcing sooner who your backing or supporting band was going to be. And fuck you, StubHub, too, because I fucking went on StubHub to try to find some tickets because I really would like to go to this show. Um, there are four tickets available on there. Want to know how much they cost? Yep. $385 what? a piece. That's crazy. <laughs> what happened to the $90 ones you found? I, that's correct. I told Brad and Brandon like a day, a day or two after um, we learned about this, I found a few on StubHub for 90 bucks a piece, and we're like, oh, that's too much. But I told them I, I keep going back every now and then just to see if maybe someone else put them up. So those ones are gone. Or maybe it's the same ones. I don't know. Uh-huh. But now they're up to $385 a piece. That's crazy. So fuck you. And whoever thinks that you're going to get $385 for someone to go see Jimmy Eat World, you're fucking out of your mind. Good luck. <laughs> My jerk of the week is going to have to be a coach at the Antelope High School football game. <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> I'm not revealing his name because I don't want retaliation put against my son who plays for the Titans. So this is what happened. They have to sell these things called Titan cards where they go around to everybody in Antelope and try to sell one of these Titan cards for $20. This They do this preseason to pay for jerseys and whatnot. Putting there up front, I really don't have to pay a lot for them to play in football, which is great, but they still have to sell the Titan cards, which is fine. Then this jerk, two weeks into the school season, into the football season, says, the tradition is 
the JV gets to wear the varsity's old jerseys. That's the tradition. He says, nobody is going to be able to wear a jersey unless everybody on this sophomore team sells two more Titan cards. So they have to sell an additional $40 worth of cards. And so the Titan cards are 20 huh? And did and Jordan sold all of his initially? Okay. And you have three days to do it. Okay. All the parents on the Antelope Facebook page are saying, you know, this is impossible. These kids, everybody's got one. Uh, we're just going to give the $40. So I'm like, Jordan actually sold one more. And I'm like, okay, here's $20. You could, I'll pay you $20 to make up the difference. After he goes to school on that Thursday, the coach sends out an email. Never mind. We don't have to sell the Titan cards. It's against some regulation that we can't sell during the season. After all the kids gave the money that <laughs> the parents have donated, the coach isn't giving the money back. So fuck him. <laughs> Has there been complaints on him from doing that? They had so many complaints, they had to shut the Facebook page down. That's hecka funny. It's I don't like getting wrapped up in the drama of it all because I think it's just retarded. But when you're doing the old switcheroo, you know that you can't sell these things. And then after they give the money, you say, no, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> so because of that yes <laughs> I'd like to cut a promo on the antelope coach Fuck yeah in the vein of macho man Randy Savage <laughs> oh antelope coach <laughs> if you go to the ring with the macho man Randy Savage and escape with your life you are a lucky 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 coach yeah and that's what they're going to be calling you a lucky coach <laughs> <laughs> because comparatively speaking to the macho man, you are nothing but garbage, you coach. <laughs> Ooh, things are starting to pop, yeah. <laughs> Just like the silver lining in the cloud, Rolls Royce, top of the line, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and this here, Nick. Yeah. This here's a crying towel for the antelope coach. <laughs> I want you to give that crying towel to him. <laughs> Put that thing down. That's for the coach. Yeah. Ooh, and a co coach, comparatively speaking, you are like a grain of sand in the Sahara Desert. And I am the whole desert. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, and I'll coach climb into the garbage can, yeah, because you are, comparatively speaking again, nothing but garbage to the macho men, yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, yeah, macho madness is going down and gathering momentum, gathering momentum since 1986. Not just in the 80s, no. We are gathering momentum in the 80s and the 90s and even in the year 2000, yeah, then beyond that, into the twilight zone, yeah. <laughs> and I'm talking about the beat goes on, yeah, the beat goes on, yeah, the beat goes on, yeah, and there's no one who's better, who does it better than the macho man, Randy Savage, yeah. <laughs> wow, man, freak out, dig it. <laughs> Freak out. <laughs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> so that's for you, Antelope Coach. That was awesome. So it's almost time for uh, the regular season of football, the National Football League, to begin. Mm -hmm. Cool picks, cool picks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when does it start? August 29th? I think that's two days ago, right? <laughs> <Today's> <laughs> 30, 31st. <laughs> No, I think it starts next week. Okay. There might, there might I, I honestly don't know, but I'm pretty sure it starts next week. There might be a Thursday game. I, I really don't know. Okay. I'll check it out. I'll but I'll, I'll be expecting some cool picks, Do especially it. with your insider info. I know. I have to get, <laughs> get back in contact. I have to page my contact. <laughs> so that'll do it for episode 62 of Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia. This is Brandon. This is Brad. This is Dick. Happy hunting.